It's 2.22 a.m. in 2008, and you're listening to Night Call. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Night Call, a podcast for your strange days and lonely nights. I'm Molly Lambert, and I am here in Los Angeles with Tess Lynch, and over in New York, we have Emily Yoshida. Hooray! Hooray! Hi. Hi. <laughs> that was like a weird kind of harmony. Hooray! Like a barbershop trio. Guys, I saw people doing doo-wop on Hollywood Boulevard yesterday, and they were great. Really? Okay. Yeah. I was like... How th- many? Three. Nice. Are you sure it wasn't us? <laughs> Our shadow doubles? It reminded yeah. me of us. It was like some older dudes. I love older dudes doing Doing doo-wop. doo-wop in front of the Pantages. They're doing uh, the do. They, yeah. I was like, sure, this should come back. Yeah. I was like, if things are coming back, nothing else that has come back has been good, but I'm fine with like doo-wop comes back. Last week, we talked about some bad bug experiences briefly, as is one of the recurring night call topics. And I wanted to share that after the episode, uh, West Coast producer Roy said he had a bug incident um, and he summarized it. I said, tell me the story. And he just said, oh, it's just short earwig in a straw. (gasps) That's why we Mm. should ban straws. That's why. It's not the obvious reason. That's right. It's a good reason. It's because there might be earwigs in them. I just remember the thing I have with earwigs is that we had a shade when I was a kid that was made out of like tubes. They were basically effectively like a a, it was a shade made out of straws, like tubes of oh yeah, kind of like a a straw type uh, roll down shade, and it faced west. So we got that like late afternoon sun coming through, and and in that sunlight you could just see the silhouettes of earwigs. (laughs) (laughs) They love straws. They love little tight spaces. <laughs> they're they're tube like tube ears animals. And straws. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're they, tube oriented animals. <laughs> I feel like we're tube oriented animals. Also. It's true. I like those little sea creatures that live in tubes. What are those? Well, I was reading. I posted a bunch before I quit Twitter. I quit Twitter. Everybody, I did it. Wait, really? Yeah. You didn't notice that my name doesn't come up. I kept saying I was going to do it, and then I did it. And uh, did you delete your account? Yeah. Incredible. You didn't notice your um, follower count, Emily, dropped by one? It dropped by one important I follower. noticed on mine. Yes. <laughs> I applaud you. I have been talking about how it's a really hard thing for me to do. Like it's I will out I will just fully admit that like the amount of followers I have on Twitter I regard as like an actual objective accomplishment in my life, which is really sad. No, cool. I felt I was like, <laughs> Oh, I've accumulated so many followers, but then I was like, I've been on this thing for eight years that's so long i quit for like a year i think and i lost my handle which was really sad and then it was replaced by a butt oh right right a butt (laughs) it was just a butt like a sandy butt a butt and i was like oh man and it still had some followers who followed me it never posted (laughs) and then i came up with a new one and like started from scratch with like lowly you know like 10 followers and was just like am i just talking to these 10 and your new one is mr tess lynch it's mr tess lynch it used to be flox lombardi yeah uh and now that's a sandy butt and now that's the sandy butt the, I figured you just changed your handle the way you can do. No, I deactivated. Yeah. I wanted to go away. I think I'm yeah. going to do it again. I deactivated. Yeah. That's because I had been like I had put on a code so that if I signed out, I had to like tech, get a text to sign back in. Hang, I was telling my boyfriend about it. I was like, yeah, you know, it's like when they put up those suicide barriers on bridges that like make it a little harder to jump over, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. And he was like, the fact that this is like what you're comparing <laughs> to logging into Twitter. I was like, you have that extra moment to think about it and then you don't jump. He was well, like, I was off of it for a long time and all I did was just, yeah, log out of it. I haven't had the app on my phone until recently. I added it just to do night call tweets, but for my personal one, I haven't had the app for a really long time. And so I just logged out, which meant that I had to log in each time. It's, and that yeah. was like enough to make me not do it for a really long time. It's exactly like cigarettes uh, in so except many less ways. Delicious. No, except less pleasurable. Yeah. It's totally <laughs> true. It's like like I, I smoked for way less long than I was on Twitter. But it's similar. It's like 
at first you're like, gotta log back in, gotta log back in. And then like after a little while, you just like don't want to anymore. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was just making me feel really bad every day. So well, I took a break. Give us a night call at one two four zero four six night if you've quit Twitter or are thinking about it, and tell us what's on your mind because yeah. I feel like this is a process a lot of us are going through right now, especially or some stage of it. I mean, I yeah. especially if you've quit Twitter, you should call us and tell you what's yes. on your mind because you have nowhere else to put it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We're the Make only us ethical your own place. personal Twitter. Right, yep. we're yeah. the message board that replaces Twitter. Just like we have t- conversations in a really slow back and forth way. Yeah. Maybe this is like counterintuitive, but I did sign up for Reddit today. That is, but that is only what dimension only, of chess are so you I, playing, Emily? Only for Terrace House Reddit. Oh, uh, nice. that makes sense. I've, I want to be able to post on Terrace House. There's Reddit. a good Reddit. I mean, like, of course, there's a good Reddit. Know. There's like lots of. There's lots of like. I mean, there's all kinds of things on Reddit. Just like there's all kinds of things on Twitter. Hey, you guys. And, can I tell you yeah. the best Reddit thread that I totally I'm on Reddit uh, secret Reddit oh yeah but uh, nice. secret Reddit well, I mean on I have Nightcall. like a se- yeah wait secret should we Reddit. start a night call Reddit wait but can can I just really quick yes. tell you that the best thread was mentioned on Twitter the other day and it was a guy who was like I think my landlord is stalking me and I'm like leaving these post it notes all over my apartment like you know he is or someone it was this big thing where he was like I'm being stalked and someone was like. You know, I don't mean to sound alarmist, but you're having like this kind of a psychosis of like you don't remember what you do is a symptom of carbon monoxide poisoning. Do you have a yes. carbon monoxide device to tell you if you're being poisoned? He was like, no, I'm going to get one. And then he was like, yeah, the reading was crazy. And then he updated <gasps> it and he was like, I had terrible carbon monoxide poisoning. He went to the hospital. Um, they were like, you know, part of your brain has been affected, but don't worry. Like most of it will grow back, but you'll never be entirely the same. And so his life was probably saved by Reddit. Wait. Hold up. For real. He was leaving himself the post-it notes? He was like blacking out and like, just writing himself like weird, scary notes and like doing weird things on his computer. He thought someone was like breaking into his apartment. So he was stalking himself. He was stalking himself. It was like memento. Exactly. He was trying to tell himself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Haven't we talked about carbon monoxide poisoning being the explanation behind a lot of uh, – a lot of uh, shadow people settings and no um, but it makes second. sense well i think a lot of also like people who think they're being followed it's like you feel the feel it like it can be a kind of brain damage where it's like you feel like yourself is outside yourself but like depersonalization just behind you yeah wow today's episode is brought to you by tomboy x Tomboy X offers amazing underwear that anybody feels comfortable in, regardless of where you fall on the size or gender spectrum. So this is the kind of underwear that you would want to look into if you are sick of underwear that has more frills than function, if you are really over the underwear that your mom got you to help you femme up, or if your underwear is just super uncomfortable and you have an entire drawer of thongs where you're like, what am I doing? You really should consider Tomboy X. It is awesome. We're big fans. All of their products are ethically produced, and they fit test on hundreds of bodies. They offer sizes XS to 4X because they think you should be exactly who you were born to be. No apologies. Their bras are soft and flattering. Their underwear is designed to stay put no matter how active you are. And they've got awesome boxer briefs that are perfect for lounging around in. It's time to stop wearing underwear that doesn't make you feel confident. So go to tomboyx.com slash call and check out their special bundles and pack pricing. And night call listeners will get an extra 15% off with the code call. Again, code call, that's C-A-L-L, for an extra 15% off. Ditch whatever you're wearing for a pair of Tomboy X underwear. Go to tomboyx.com slash call. Guys, should we take a night call? Let's take a night call. We did send out the call for a certain kind We're of gonna night call. We're going to take a night oh, call that's true. into the past. Yeah. Specifically 10 years ago to 2008, a time before any of us were on Twitter. Tess and I had not met Emily yet. 
No. Nope. But we had met each other. Yes. And can I tell you really quick that one thing that relates to what we just talked about, I was looking through all my emails from 2008, which took like about four and a half hours, but I did it. And the one really interesting thing I found, it was really the only one, was that Molly sent me a live science article in 2008 about shadow people. Oh. And it was the first time hmm. I had ever heard of them. And it was the explanation was um, something about the brain, like, you know, reacting to certain external stimuli. Oh. Oh, wow. It was, so we've had all these Full conversations circle. before, exactly. and then we've been leaving each other post-it notes from the past Yep, saying, hey, boring people, get some new things <laughs> to think and talk Stop about. Circling. Stop obsessing over shadow people. Um, well, let's take a night call let's from do 2008. It. Hello, night callers. It's Jessica. I'm in Chicago, and I'm in bed by the headache. But I have a very visceral memory of... 2008, and, and spending it house-sitting for my friend who was on tour with Girl Talk and taping up pictures and articles about both Barack Obama and soon-to-be Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel, who at that point I thought was interesting and perhaps a tiny bit cute and also going to be a great mayor. I was wrong about all of those things. Goodbye. <laughs> Let's say that's a great take. I mean, that's the main take. I think it's just uh, it's always weird to look back and see that you were naive about something that you didn't know you were naive about yet. Right. Especially right. in terms of like politicians or people that you like invested time and uh, caring in. And then you're like, man, <laughs> that turned Did out we? wrong. Yep. Do you think that we ever really had that kind of naivete, though, as like within our generation? Yes, as as because I think we, I think everybody thought that like racism was fixed because Obama was became president, and that well, so that so that we were like headed towards a more progressive future. Not that there would right. be like a huge blowback to the idea of like things becoming more progressive like I was like great now we have a black president and then we have like a Muslim female president and then we like all of the underrepresented groups of history will get to be president and like that was obviously not how a lot of people felt that are now making themselves known and first they did it as the tea party and it was fringy and now they're all in everything and it sucks. Oh, I remember the most relevant thing that I knew about Rahm Emanuel at the time in 2008. Was, was it that, that his, his like, brother? Cousins. Yeah, or his, his brother. Yeah, it was His brother uh, Ari is Emmanuel. Ari Emanuel. The, which the was, inspiration for Ari Gold. Right, which is like an super a tip that somebody might be a yeah. psycho. Yeah. Is yeah. If, uh, but at that point, you're like, oh, all of Hollywood makes you cool. Like, Well, also, like, let's talk about <laughs> brothers for a second. Oh, man. Emily. Well, Emily hates brothers. Emily comes out hard against the brother film industrial complex, and I agree with I'm her. I'm really brother anti-brothers. Well, it's, there's to been... To the point where I'm not even that excited even about, like, the new Coen Brothers movie. Like, whatever. I like a lot of Coen Brothers movies. No, well, we the Coen we, Brothers... We, 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 it, the Coen Brothers, the problem is, like, the Coen Brothers made film brothers a thing that yes. could be, like, hey, there's two of them. And, <laughs> and, and that's it. This that's is it. my, this is my it. thing. It's like you, you go in for a pitch meeting and they're like, well, is the director a man? And they're like, no, it's two men. And they're like, <laughs> like that's what? And they're related. Even better. What? Two little um, Spielbergs that are the same. I don't care too much if people are, are brothers. I like, um, I like other somebody, men on somebody's, a, somebody's you know. the dead weight in that. Well, and somebody's, yeah. I like the like, Hughes brothers. And the Cohen brothers, sure, and that is maybe where. But there have been just a lot of a lot of brother teams coming up recently. Look, I have mixed feelings about the Duplass brothers, but I don't hate everything they do. Some things I they do, I, I hate like. everything the Duplass brothers. I, I, We're either. just I mean, like, like the, they have something that none of us. I mean, I have a brother, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come so on. You literally have Wait, everything. I literally, have. I actually, not only do I have a great brother, my brother Ben Lambert. You make content shout with your out. brother. I totally yeah. also make content with my brother. But Hypocrite. It's, but it's cool because we're a brother and sister who Must are friends. Be nice. We're like <laughs> we're more of like in the Bart and Lisa. Yeah. Uh, Lane. What about sisters? 
I don't like. Well, I well, mean, there I aren't do, enough sister duos, and there aren't enough female but directing duos. There are a lot of. Period. There are the Soska sisters, and there's a who lot of sisters horror. in music, and some, and for some reason, I don't like that. Oh, you don't like that because you guys are both only children, so you're like, fuck having a sibling. <laughs> well, be your own person. <laughs> I don't like the idea of sharing an interior life with somebody else. That's hilarious. Well, I don't think you bad. can artistically make something that like honors your point of view if you have a shared history with someone. Look, like, it's, I you're going to incorporate too many cooks. I can't yeah. co-write either, but we all are doing a podcast together. So like sisters of the moon. Sisterhood. What about like, I, yeah, just like, you know ladies of the canyon like she will weave her loom today and i will oh, I bake like this the pie. I, I, I like the annihilation i like the annihilation of the self or the ego you will in, tend like an all plants. female group or something well, like i like the idea of like a an ensemble that you could be a part of like a like like a an egoless ensemble how do you feel about a night call uh separatist uh all female commune where some men are allowed but they have to do all the domestic labor and emotional labor Let's make that our oh, the, right. the grounds of our Reddit. Tess can't do communes. I'm sorry. I ruined it. Because she doesn't. But what, okay, but like, I don't like eating at a table with a bunch of people. What if everyone had their own space? Just because of Pan Quotidian? Yes. Yes. A hundred percent That is that why. awful place. She hates communal tables. I do. But like, how do you feel about like, you don't like communal bathrooms no, either. I don't like communal anything. Like, I don't know how I would react. But to you have a like a family. Yeah, I do. <laughs> No yeah. one's invited over for dinner, and there's no play dates. <laughs> this is our space. Oh wire ha- no wire hangers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back deeper into 2008. This next night call is from uh, a true stan. Hi, I'm Emily's mom, and I remember 2008 because Emily and I went on a road trip. Uh, across the country from Arkansas to Washington State. That's all I was going to share, um, some details about that. Bye. So that was a call from my mom. Thanks, Emily's mom. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah. Well, we did go on a 2008 road trip from Arkansas to Washington State. That's true. Why were you going? Yeah, why? Well, well, uh, my mom was moving from Arkansas to Washington, so we were we packed up her house in Arkansas, where she had lived been living for a couple years, and then we're moving to Washington. Actually, that move I would didn't I didn't that move was interesting. It was an interesting road trip. I like road trips a lot, and I like I, I remember a lot of the pictures I took on that road trip. Um, yeah, I feel like that's a part of the country I have never driven through and have no oh, yeah. I've like learned that all of my mental images of the Midwest are actually of like South Pasadena set dressed to look like the Midwest in yeah. movies. Well where did you what did you pass through? Like what route did you take? We would have gone through I think we went through Kansas. Yeah. We a lot took of cornfields. Well, Kansas is a lot of wheat, and it's very, very flat, and there's, like, nothing uh, for a really long time. That drive through the middle of Kansas is very long. I do remember we went up through – we went through uh, Oregon uh, and, like, like west uh, eastern Oregon, though, uh, Mm -hmm. which was pretty wild because that was the first time I was like, oh, there are, like, McCain signs out here, which was, like, very foreign to me. I was like (laughs) – like, I I kind of got an – interesting look at uh the red state blue state comparison on that road trip because it was you know a campaign year and everything it was a hot a very hot presidential uh, race uh by our standards at that time um so it was interesting to kind of get that sort of cross-section and see how things change and how the political field changed even just like from stopping in diners and motels and whatever along the way um yeah, and so I was very like, oh yeah, like so much of the West Coast still is super like conservative and super racist. And yeah, stuff. and the Pacific like, Northwest, which obviously has this like crunchy granola reputation, but also like yeah. was founded as like a white separatist colony right. and obviously retains a lot of that. Oregon, especially, I would say. Yeah, because I grew up in 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 Seattle and the Seattle area in general. Um, as we talked about, so it was interesting to kind of go back to it. That was the first. It time sounds really like an indie in movie. Oh yeah, it was like a hundred percent. I was like living a Sundance movie. Um, I remember more big touristy things we did when we were moving out to 
oh, um, Iowa when I was a kid because we went to like the corn maze and we went to Wall Drug and all these like classic. I want to go to all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, which was cool. Like, I was really glad I went to all those places, especially like as a surly tween. Has anyone um, been to Mount Rushmore? No. I've been to what Mount Rushmore. You have? Yeah, I, totally. I totally want to go I've to Mount Rushmore. So many, I've seen so much of this goddamn country. You represent <laughs> you're, you're the rep- things you've seen. <laughs> you're representing yeah. for the middle of the country on this podcast. I am. Uh, I am. Tess is the I, I'm, I, I am a Midwesterner in, in many in many respects. You are. Uh, uh, yeah. Tess, when was your big road trip through the South? My big road trip was in 2006. We went from Arizona to Washington, D.C. And you saw a lot of stuff. Saw a lot of stuff. Oh, and yeah. I, I don't mean to be TMI, but I remember very little because I had a really bad <laughs> urinary tract infection. I'm just going to say it because it's important to normalize that I was like so anxious the whole time because, you know, I just like, I, I don't know. I was, I, I'm not like big in the, I'm not like big fan of like being in the car a long time anyway and I was just like ugh I right because personal space yeah and I also had just gotten a puppy and we had to board the puppy and like so anytime I would just be staring out the window and being like Oklahoma is really pretty I'm really far away from my cool puppy and I have a <laughs> UTI and like it was really hot I mean it was interesting we we did like we stopped in Truth or Consequences New Mexico by mistake <laughs> Uh, consequences yeah, exactly um, but yeah I mean it was interesting to drive through places that I hadn't I'd never like spent much time in Oklahoma we spent some time in Memphis and that was beautiful you loved Memphis and you loved Atlanta I well I just always love Atlanta yeah I mean it's it's like my fantasy and did you real go estate. through New like, Orleans we didn't go through Atlanta that time though I've just been there uh, we did not we I've been to New obviously I've been to New Orleans my husband's uh, from there but no we didn't we were like it was Tucson and then we for Memphis was like the one cool place we stopped. Every I really want to go to Memphis. I, I want to Memphis. go there too. Yeah. Guys, night call Memphis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Wait. Um uh oh, I was going to say about uh the road trip that I just remembered, which is actually like some context for it that is actually extremely 2008 to me. Uh is that uh, I was able to take that road trip because I like went on a prolonged leave from my job and then found out when I got back that I didn't have a job anymore. I was just like, uh, I'm going to go for a while. Hope my job is back here for me uh, when I get back to L.A. And it wasn't. I also left my car um, on a street that I thought was not going to have any um, uh, street cleaning. Oh, I was man. Be but it not it did it didn't have street cleaning. But they shot something there. They there was a shoot a film shoot while I was away, so it got towed. And I came back like a month later to like a um, two thousand or something uh, dollar tow that I had to pay for, um, which really set the stage for the next year of my life <laughs> in, a, <laughs> yeah. in a pretty gnarly way. Also, didn't have a job at that point. I just remember the dismay of coming back and like my car not being there and being like, oh God, like what am I going to do? Yeah, the worst um, thing is coming back from a long trip and having something like that because you just, uh, you know, you're like, the tone has been set. Yep. It's yep. like when you forget like, to I'm clean out your fridge and then you come back and you're like, oh no, oh boy. like my whole life oh. sucks now. <laughs> What's that smell? What's that smell? Should we take another night call? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, night call. It's 2.45 a.m. in Chicago, Illinois, and I remember 2008. I was 18 and living in a small town in Wisconsin and finishing high school when 2008 started, so a lot of the decadence of the year was really only something I absorbed through reading, like, in magazine and the internet in a really filtered way and I bought a promo copy of Justice's Cross from a used CD store which I've always really loved because I was imagined some person who worked in like radio got it and hated it um, <laughs> and instead of associating the album with like getting wasted uh, at some sleazy party I associated it more with like the times that my parents would let me decide what to use uh what to listen to when we were driving in the car um and then i went to college and got hooked on mp3 blogs and i downloaded some dj software like everyone else did and it was so fun i feel like it was a very goofy like wholesome version of other people's 2008 but at the time i thought it was the most incredible thing i feel like yeah i think that i think that cross is probably 
the album of 2008 at least for me i don't know in in my in my corner of the world what about you guys did that fit into your your, your i wasn't i wasn't as landscape? into bloghouse as many many of our friends and fans uh emily is our premier bloghouse person yeah uh, oh, hi. but my boyfriend was also super into bloghouse at the time uh megan garvey friend of the pod she oh yeah, Bloghausen. Bloghausen. Bloghouse historian. I was like Bloghouse Blog adjacent, but I feel like I was like that was when I was like DJing a country night. Oh, <laughs> I was on my own, <laughs> on my Amazing. own trip. Didn't I go do that with you once, and we got like yelled at? We got yelled at for using CDs, which yeah. I maintain was like fine to do because it was also like when you could newly download music and burn it to CDs. Right. So yeah. I was really excited. I had vinyl also. But these, <laughs> you know, it was, that's where I always fall. It was, irre- it was still irrelevant at that's that point. That's where I always then, fall yes. on the digital and film su- of anything. I'm always like, both are, f- are good in their yeah. own ways. Yeah. And yeah, I like um, had records, but I also brought CDs. We've been asked to explain what Blog House is. Oh. So why was it called that? <laughs> um, because it was electronic music that was you made popular through blogs. blogs, a type of what music blog. What are more blog. examples of Blog House? <laughs> I think of like Felix the House Cat. <laughs> like, Cut copy. Fortet. Yeah, they yeah. Count? Fortet or um, that predate. Um, okay. And uh, like it's a little more new rave, but like Crystal Castles. It was all this background. like party music, like super heavy. The and like everything up in the front of the mix. That's yeah. the thing I think of with Blog House. It's like, like it's made to be played out of a laptop. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, sleigh bells, maybe. Oh, yeah, Sleigh Bells. Like, some of that stuff, I feel like, does hold up. I was probably a little too snobby about it because it was, like, too hair metal-y to me in some mm-hmm. way. Uh, we talk about this a lot, I feel like, the t- about my belief that the 2000s were just, like, now I see them as, like, Weimar Germany. Right. Because it's like, yeah, yeah, everybody was, like, partying and hedonistic and, like, things felt like they were getting more progressive and just, like, would forever. But also there was, like, the Bad Vice magazine, like... Exploit yourself because yeah. it's cool, and you're like, if you don't do it, you're not cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of journalism. We were doing a lot of like snarking. Um, I realized going through emails, probably everybody like everybody. Was, everybody was really communicative. Who was writing online? Yes. We were still doing this recording. Yeah, we were doing this, this recording. recording. Um, non-society. I found like. Like many emails right. per day about goop and non society. Right. There like, were a lot of like bitchy, this. there was like gawker culture was mm-hmm. still in effect of just like oh, definitely bitchy. Att- and that was what everybody thought was like the worst thing that could happen on the internet, right. which is really yeah. funny to think about now was like somebody could say something mean about you in public. Yeah. I think they made some pretty bad calls, but I miss gawker they so They did, much. but then when they fought Hulk Hogan, it was that thing of like yeah. both of these people are evil. But like the way in which Nick Detton is evil is still preferable to the way in which Peter Thiel is evil. Uh, Also, this is the thing I keep (laughs) saying. It's like don't meet out justice like against people who are are like blameless. Like the reason that anybody figures out like what a law should be or what a guideline should be is when somebody's like right up against it. Like virtuous people aren't the people who prompt the deciding of like. Right. Well, I always I thought know. Gawker was going to like break real stories eventually. Like I thought well, Gawker, they did. I they did, but they were all kind of like they broke they broke lots of stories. I mean, but I feel like I those know. stories were like ticky tack. I feel like they never broke like the big political scandal that I expected them to. Part of me just is like, well, I wish they I, were here now. I appreciated that they did like go hard on Mark Zuckerberg from the beginning, yeah. and that you know uh, the. Uh, hmm? Valley Wag. Oh, you mean Valley oh, yeah. Wag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just became a million years old <laughs> in, in real it's time. You, twi- you quit Twitter. Um, Valley Wag is it a great website, you. and uh, the stuff that Natasha Tiku did there yeah. was always. I was like, this is the stuff yeah. that like needs yeah, to be yeah, done. Yeah. Is people, cri- you know, covering tech in a way that's critical, mm-hmm. and they were like the only people doing it. And then that was also obviously what made Silicon Valley want Gawker not to exist, right? Yeah, because they were like, we should only be covered in like glowing, amazing terms about all the great stuff yeah. we're doing, and that's the then you know, and and just tech starting to take on the press as mm-hmm. like, let's buy it out and then close it. So yeah, a lot of people. Emily, was your job in pr- in print or in writing that you didn't what? have anymore when you came home? 
Oh, good God, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, my journalism job that I had in 2008. No, I worked at a camera shop in, uh, in, a, in Hollywood. Um, there was something about, like, later, I, I think I also spent a lot of time reading AV Club at work. There was something about, though, like, the years of reading Gawker and reading all this, like, gossip about media figures in New York that I had no idea, like, what, I had no idea how to parse it at all. Uh that felt like a I, that feels very um, inseparable from the vibe of like I remember so many things that I read in that office and watched in that office, including like Britney Spears's um, "Give Me More" performance at the VMAs. I remember oh, yeah. all of us like gathered around to like watch that and be like, "What's happened to her?" <laughs> wasn't, she was on but there the was this very like two K eight though, right? No, 2008 was, was like, the bad wasn't it year. The fall and then the blackout. comeback album, though, wasn't that all? Well, in the album came out and the album was a huge success, but they were also they were like she wasn't stable. she wasn't she in wasn't good performing. shape, and they were making yeah. her perform anyway. Right. And it was, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, I do. Remember but then that. she stopped performing at a certain point. Yeah, and I people it, were they like, realized it was just like a losing game. It was horrible. It was yeah, like it was the really worst bad. thing ever. They like put her on stage before she was ready, and also people were like very mean about her appearance. I do remember that. I but it's hard because like her. Her decline had been going on for a bit, and I was like, she's well, she was pulling just it so together. It's like, no, she's not. Well, it's like, you know, we talk about this. Like, people Brittany. who have mental health problems, like, you can't force them to perform. Yeah. And but, when somebody but, is, like, the cash, you know, maker in a, in a family of people, that's why all child stars are bad. Yep. Well, it feels like, it felt like to me that, culturally there was some kind like something like very broad that like synced up between what happened financially to the country in 2008 uh and what was happening um culturally right because that was like like, it was like it was like when that we could no longer cash the checks anymore and there was something about this like we watched this sort of it was fall of an empire yeah, and it, it went out over like it was able to sustain itself and like also generate its own kind of like culture just in like watching people like Lindsay Lohan. Right, I hated all that br- stuff. There was all the like, there was a lot of just like. Predatory. Well, what do you think about it being like campified now? Like, blogs, I, like, I think it's um, gross. Pop culture I mean, died in two thousand eight. That one's fine because now you're just like, oh, this is what I thought was so bad, and now it's like. But I don't know. Part of the reason I thought it was bad is because I was like Paris Hilton, like is a racist, and you know. So it was like, yeah, there, there was nothing fun. I I don't remember anything being fun about following whatever Paris Hilton was doing. I remember it being kind of fun at some point following whatever Lindsay Lohan was doing until it started getting sad. But was, that was like in 2007. It yeah. started to get really like or 2006 even. Whenever like whenever she became uninsurable, that was really rough. I think I always like liked her. Yeah, and so I, was I was rooting for her until it became apparent that she on. was like not somebody you should root for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking like we always talk about like all the messy women of that time, but like like Brett Ratner like figured in prominently yeah. in all these like gossip stories and stuff, like being just a coked out mess. Well think about all the stuff of, that like, was happening guys. we like did not know about. I'm sure well of what's his yeah. name? Uh Brandon Oh, oh, the, oh, the yes. fire crotch guy. <laughs> the fire um, crotch yeah. guy. He yeah, was like he's, the cokiest, sweatiest. Yeah. All these sweaty boys. What was yeah. like, all these- Perez Hilton had a really like mean, Ugh, something like just a greasy bear. Every, yeah. All- <laughs> <laughs> it was a gross hey, time. I feel like it's fine to acknowledge that it was like a gross time and we were mostly miserable. Can I tell you, I had a really, I had a pretty good 2008 up until the end. And I was remembering uh, that on like, I think it was Christmas Eve, my parents were visiting and we were like, let's go see a movie. Let's go see Gran Torino. <laughs> oh, so my God. Saw, and about halfway through the movie, I just started panicking. I was like, I picked the wrong movie to see. Oh like, my, my parents God. are old. Like, oh, no. And I just started crying. And I was like, it's going to be fine. And then we had Christmas. And then, like, the morning, the day after Christmas, early in the morning, we were renting this little house in Laurel Canyon. And I was like, we're going to stay here forever. It was so beautiful. There were, like, deer in the yard. And someone came and knocked on our door and explained that the house was in pre-foreclosure. And that the owner, who was our landlord, who we just loved and who by all appearances was doing so great for himself, uh, 
could was had stopped paying a long time ago. And then in, in a conversation with our landlord, he was kind of like, do you guys think you might want to buy it? I'll give you a great price. And we were like, ha ha, we're 25. Oh we don't have jobs that are normal. Like what? No. <laughs> but all of a sudden I was like, oh, shit. Like things seem really like I knew things were bad, but now things are like super bad. And I just saw Gran Torino and ruined <laughs> Christmas. It was just really I intense. associate Gran Torino at that time so much. I don't know why, but like it feels sort of spooky that you brought it up because I do think of that as just being like a bummer. somebody explained it to me like recently because I don't know why it came up. But he they were like Gran Torino. He's like the racist. And he but they, they were saying it's about like a really specific thing. Does it take place in Minnesota? Because I know that that's where a lot of Hmong people are. But like, yeah, um, it's about I, I can't remember. But it's, it's about like, like it's about a t- like a very specific immigrant community. Right. Yeah. And like, like he like read a story about it and was like, this will make a great movie. Yeah. Like, I think that one of the reasons we were thinking about 2008 or re- one reason I've been thinking, I mean, I'm always thinking about 2008. But um, one reason I think we were talking about it is like there have been so many. Um, or like a month ago, there were all these 10 year anniversary pieces about, uh, the dark night and oh, everybody movie. was sharing their like stories of what seeing dark night for the first time. And I like, I thought I, I, you know, it took me five seconds to think back about the circumstances in which I saw dark night. And I was like, Oh my God, like that really, that is like 2008 to me. Uh, <laughs> This is Just why like, I quit Twitter, so I don't have to hear anyone's like thoughts about the Dark Knight ever again. And look, oh, meanwhile, here you, you go. We found you. <laughs> they'll find you. Um, I yeah. hate those movies so much. The Christopher Nolan I remember, Batman movies. Remember uh, when I was trying to be friends with you guys before we had a podcast together and I asked you guys to see Dark Knight Rises with me? No. no. Were we like, no? <laughs> yeah, you were like, no. That's so, that's so mean. We were hazing you. But it wasn't about you. It was really just that I hate those movies, um, I, which I really do. I saw the first one uh, in Croatia, and that was the one I enjoyed the most because I saw it in Because Cro- you were in Croatia. Because I was in Croatia, and it was like, we have some time to kill. Let's see a movie. And so it was, Bat- it was called Batman Pochitak, and <laughs> it was like subtitled in uh, Croatian. Uh, And that one I was like, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but I just, I hate it. I don't know. I like campy Batman. I kind of like the first one because I think it's kind of campy. Like, I think um, Pretty Man from Batman Begins. uh, (laughs) Killian Murphy? (laughs) Killian Murphy. I think he's, like, super campy and fun in that movie as a villain. Like, where he just, like, puts a bag on his head. Oh, I love love it. I thought the bag was scary, (laughs) actually. Like, like Tess, like, you like Batman? I've said this. I feel like I can't even say it more because it's, like, I've just said all I have to say. I like Batman. Emily, you like Batman, too, right? Because he's goth. Um, uh, I, I Batman's fine. I'm Batman agnostic. I, Batman is good sometimes, and Batman is bad. Sometimes. I fucking hate Batman. I know because he's a cop he's and a he's a rich guy. No, he's We've a heard billionaire it. who We've works heard. for the cops. I like the villainesses of the Batman universe. I like the Penguin. Right. I was always very intrigued by the yeah, Penguin. Yeah, right. I like the villains. I guess even the Joker. Uh, no, I think I think I think the villains are what make. Like, that's the thing about Batman, right? Is that they're Best good villains. villains. Yeah. Also, I yeah. feel like we live in, I mean, like, maybe we it's do. It's very Gotham City. We do live in the Joker, the, like, Frank Miller killing joke Joker yeah. universe mm-hmm. right yeah. now, where everything is, like, violent and a nightmare and insane and also, like, just makes no sense and, like, makes you crazy by the in the way that it, like, makes no sense and there's all these crazy double yeah. standards and it's like it's like the joker would make things happen <laughs> can i tell you guys something that i think about from 2008 all the time yes is um the south park episode about last night that aired the day after the election do you remember that where randy gets really drunk and he's no. like celebrate good obama come on it's no. obama obama there was like this long arc in the previous season I think that involved like a jewel heist and I wasn't paying. I was just like dipping in and out of the South Park at that point. But apparently they wrote the episode to be like pretty neutral. But they, you know, I guess like 
they were using a sports betting website and they were like, obviously, Obama's going to win. But just in case, we'll like make it neutral enough that we can like dub it. But it was really interesting because at the time, because I love Randy, I was like, oh, man, that's because I bought like literally the day of the election. I, I parked my car outside of Petco and I had an audition. And then on the way out, I was like, it's such a good day. I'm going to buy a tortoise. And I was like, I'm going to buy a tortoise <laughs> in honor of Obama. And I got oh. him home. I was like, I'm celebrating. And then like two weeks later, the tortoise, I I ins- like dug fencing down into the ground so he couldn't escape and he did escape anyway and now he's like roaming the hills but he's like native to LA and whatever it's fine I've had some animals escape I've had some animals Uh, escape once a snake got lost in my room found it again though you found it again long life found it again in my room but anyway I think of the South Park all the time because I was like oh in retrospect (laughs) I want to watch it again you were Randy well yeah it was totally Randy but also it was just interesting because it kind of like foreshadowed the like political divide this is again looking back is like everything like hindsight's 2020 yeah and that's why i think we need to go back even further because like extra hindsight is like a hundred a (laughs) hundred which is not how vision works but no i started i started listening to a podcast about the um the clinton impeachment Uh, that uh, i'm not (laughs) even like that less but like 1968 which is like the anniversary. I feel like in a better world where there were more newspapers to write about things, we'd all be talking about those anniversaries. But there are no newspapers now. So I, if you think about Obama as being like Kennedy, like the Kennedy years, everybody thinks everything's going to be great. And then it turns into like the Nixon years, like very quickly. Sure. Yeah. I just feel like when people talk about the 60s being tumultuous, like now I understand why they always use the word tumultuous because they're like, oh, yeah, Yeah. this is incredibly stressful. And like in the space of like a year, you had a president assassinated and then impeached like or space of a decade rather. Right. Like or like like articles of impeachment drawn up. Like I feel like that's pretty comparable to now, except now we have all the like media chatter also compounding it to make every every moment feel that much. Right. But I also I like the moment in the civil rights movement when people were still like we're gonna fix stuff and make it better before the like backlash and we're like in the backlash now but we're obviously also in a civil rights movement it's like yesterday was like the anniversary of heather Heyer getting killed it's just like stuff is happening all the goddamn time it Mm -hmm. feels like and i keep being like why can't i project like two years into the future so I could like see what's going to happen and like help Mm. Um, and that's making me feel insane right now you know because everything feels so end of the worldy oh the other day I was like hmm it's been a little while since we've had an earthquake and my husband was like shut up but I was like (laughs) all of this horrible stuff is happening like I forgot that when things were like less hectic I was always like earthquakes hmm nervous about those mm-hmm. earthquakes and now i'm like i've forgotten to be nervous about earthquakes because there's too much other stuff yeah it's just weird to be like oh 2008 an innocent like calm time when i think for the most part we were like miserable and unemployed well, well also like, we it was yeah. like the it felt like the end of the world at the time i think like i i mean my experience of it both like as a part of a generation that was uniquely affected by it like as we all were and we've talked about that before but then also like personally i feel like i feel like a lot of stuff felt very very fucking but isn't that also just like being 24 or whatever and being Mm -hmm. like like i I think things are happening in my life i think that lessened it i mean i think being in our mid-20s kind of like while we were affected by things it was was so much less so than now because i just thought that like no one ever had a job in their 20s when they got out of college i was like that's just what happens is like you get out of college and you apply for all these jobs and you don't get any of them and then you have to take like a shittier job and then they let you go and or it's- just like the things that were happening seemed stressful but it was like well we have time before you know we like well of course maybe eventually i'll buy a house i just have to let all this settle down and it's very sad but i'm in my 20s right and right it's like oh no no soon oh, no. soon oh, no. the jobs and and opportunities I mean, will come yeah. and then they like did for a while and S- summer of summer of 2008 though like i was like living in a closet on a mattress yeah like, <laughs> that was my experience with, like i don't know it didn't feel it didn't feel like normal 20 something shit that uh, that i was going it was through, a lo- I, I have I, to say i feel like i felt the same way but i feel like that's also because maybe because of facebook and stuff where i was like other people are having normal lives 
where they like go on trips and the, like the going oh, on yeah, the trips it, was a big thing in the 2000s. I was a bridesmaid a bunch and I was like, how can people afford Right, that was a to big go thing. To these? Yeah. I mean, I still struggle with that where I'm like people take a lot of trips. Like it's really expensive to take a trip and you're taking like all of these trips and like, you know, it just back in 2008 I was like, wow, like my friends are so successful. Well, I remember also when Facebook started being like, haha, wouldn't it be weird if we were all on Facebook until people are like getting married and having kids right, and right. stuff? But we will, of course, not be <laughs> But of doing course, that. we will not be on that platform anymore. We'll be on some- I was off it. Well, good for you. <laughs> we were yeah. on Facebook in 2008? Well, no, I, I, I got on Facebook in college, like, you know, but I, I was off it by the time I got married. <laughs> I, I thought that's what you were saying. Like, what if we were still on this when we were? Oh, yeah, married? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was um, not. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right, right. But like other people, I was like, people are sure, posting yeah. their like newborn photos on Facebook. This is so weird. Like, also, how do the newborns feel? Like, how are the newborns going to feel when they become old enough to see that there's like a digital record of their life on screen? I don't know that that many people I knew had babies, but I was very there for the pet photos on Facebook <laughs> in that era because everyone was getting like their first pets. That's funny. I'm, I still like pet Facebook. Well, it's funny how much I don't know. I feel like just that that thing of like comparing yourself against your peers and the way the Internet made it possible to do that in like new ways that were probably not good for anybody. I think they mentioned that because New York Magazine right now is doing – Emily pointed us to um, – they're doing like a 2008 retrospective. And I think – did Instagram start in 2008? Uh, there were other things that were precursors to Instagram. Right. Like, it was called um, like, like – Hipstamatic. Yeah. Hip, yeah. It was called Hipstamatic. Um, I have the Hipstamatic app still. Ooh, oh, I yeah. didn't do Instagram for a long time. Uh, yeah, I didn't either. No, and I remember seeing. I didn't do it till I got. I didn't have a smart device for. A very yeah, long me time, too. Because so I was like, yeah. what could be worse for me than the internet on my phone? <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. worst possible thing for me, a person with an addictive personality for whom the internet is a trap. For whom the internet tolls, <laughs> it tolls for you. Wow, this was a trip down memory lane during which I realized I know nothing about myself. Well, I th- I think that I think that 2008 is not like I feel like I had a very subjective understanding of why 2008 was significant just for my own life, but I think the more time goes by, the more I realize that like everybody was kind of going through it in different ways and not kind of a lot of that has to do with the recession but the real effects of the recession weren't really until 2009 at least for me and uh like financially and stuff so i was I already like, broke i think at that point it was yeah, definitely like was we, we yeah. got out of college in 2005 and there were also like not not jobs waiting for us at all i was applying for like so many magazine like i applied to tiger beat so many times oh man that's a shame they didn't hire you at tiger i beat. know it's like i'd be so good at it. That, was, that was my life plan was to get a job at tiger beat and then write a tell-all about <laughs> the tween like industrial exploitation sector you still could still could had a lot of ideas you just blew your cover, though. I just blew my cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for listening to this 2008 special of Night Call. We're still open to some 2008 memories if you want to call in and leave them for us. If you have any um, fond memories of the 2080s, feel free yeah. to leave them for us. But also if you want to tell us about how you were also miserable and broke and alone and sleeping on a mattress in a closet and thought things could never get worse... And actually, you know what, guys? Like, things are kind of better in some ways for us as humans. Personally, personally, things are better for me. Than I'm a more stable person, I think, yeah. question mark. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Once again, give us a call at one two four zero four six night or an email at nightcallpodcast at gmail.com. And leave us a review on iTunes and a rating. We love them. We love Keep you. Coming. We'll see you all next week. Bye.